What's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is John and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to create a vintage sort of retro cracked paint text effect. So after this tutorial you'll be able to take pretty much any picture you want from Google Images and turn it into a vectorized texture. In this video specifically we'll be covering how to create kind of a retro vintage cracked paint texture, um, but really this will work with pretty much any texture that you want to create. Adding a texture to your design can be an awesome tool to kind of uh, bring a little bit of real world feel to your design. A lot of times when creating digital art, you kind of lose that real world texture, you know, real world feel that you get uh, from actually creating art in the real world. By adding textures to your work, you can really give it some life and uh, you know, make your work stand out from the crowd. I also just wanted to say that I moved apartments recently, so this is my first time filming a video in this new space, so apologies if anything's a little bit wonky with the imaging. Uh, I'm still kind of working out bugs and figuring out what's gonna work for filming in this new space. I'm also probably gonna end up doing like a little bit of an apartment tour at some point, uh, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. And as always, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like below for the YouTube algorithm or a comment if you feel so inclined or have any questions, that would be seriously helpful as it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, with all that out of the way, let's jump into the video. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is obviously open up Adobe Illustrator. For this tutorial, I created a 1920 by 1080 document, but you can create whatever size you like. It doesn't really matter, this is gonna work with whatever document size you choose. And then the first thing that you're gonna wanna do once you have your document open is drag in the image that you'd like to turn into a texture. So how I do this normally is search through Google Images until I find a texture that I like that's usually over a thousand pixels. Illustrator a lot of times has a little bit of a tough time turning uh, super low res files into textures. So I would definitely recommend that you try to find something that's at least a thousand pixels. So once you have that, simply just drag it into Illustrator and put it in your document. So to create this vector texture, we're gonna be using the tool within Illustrator called Image Trace and there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just go up to this top bar and select image trace if you have the most recent version of Illustrator, but if you're working with something a little bit older, you might need to go to object and then image trace and make. Illustrator is gonna give you a warning, especially if you have a little bit of a slower computer, that it's gonna take a minute to uh, you know, turn this into a vector, but don't worry about that. Usually I just would click do not show again and click okay. Now, Illustrator's gonna take a second, you know, load this all up, turn it into a vector, and you can see that it did it pretty quickly. Now, this is great, but we wanna make a few adjustments to this. So what we can do to make some adjustments is go up to Window, and then down to Image Trace, which will open up our Image Trace panel. And we have a few different options here that we can play with. So you're gonna be fine leaving this with default if that's how you wanna do it, and don't wanna bother taking the extra time to do this step, but if you'd like, what you can do uh, is play with some of these settings. So there's a bunch of different presets you can play with. Uh, I definitely would stick to black and white logo or just the default. Um, you wanna keep it basically just black and white. Uh, if you start introducing colors, it isn't gonna work very well with the next step of this tutorial. So the next thing that we can do is mess with the threshold. Now, the more that you adjust the threshold to the left, uh, the less it's going to pick up from the image, and the more you adjust from the right, the more that it will pick up from the image. So you can see if we drag it kind of over to the left, it's gonna, again, do its loading thing, and you can see that it picked up a lot less of those lines. But if we go over here and uh, you know make it pick up more, you can see a lot more went black. And you're basically just gonna wanna play with this until you get the look that you like. Uh, it depends really on how much texture you're going for. Uh, so you're just gonna kind of play around with this threshold thing. It's, it's gonna take a minute to load, but uh, it's worth it to play with it for a moment so that you can get the exact result that you want. So I'm gonna do it one more time, a little bit less than this. And wait for it to load, and that looks pretty good right there. And one little cool thing that you can see here, uh, doesn't necessarily relate directly to this tutorial, but I think it's interesting. You can see actually how many paths it created and how many anchor points it created. So we can see for this image specifically that it created uh, 51,766 anchor points, which is pretty crazy that the computer can do that to me. I don't know, I just think it's cool. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do to start editing this more is actually expand it. So what we'll do is head up over to this top panel and click expand. Now this image is going to become a lot more editable. So what we're gonna wanna do next is actually remove the white background from this image. And to do that, to start off, what we'll need to do is ungroup this. Because remember, it created an entire object which is all grouped together, and we want to get rid of just the white portion. So we need to ungroup that from the black portion. So to do that, we'll right-click on the object you just made and click Ungroup. 
Now, if we head over into our layers panel, you can see that it just created a ton of different paths. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about these. To delete the white space, all you gotta do is deselect the object, and we'll use the magic wand tool to actually select the white space in this and remove it. This is one of the few times you're actually gonna find an application for the magic wand tool within Illustrator, so it's nice to be able to use it. So to quickly pull that up, just hit Y on your keyboard and click the white space, which is going to select a crazy amount of anchor points and paths. Uh, so to delete it, all you gotta do is hit delete. And I just accidentally deleted the wrong part. So zoom in, make sure you actually select the white space. Uh, once you have that selected, you just hit delete. And now you can see that we're left with this cracked paint texture of all black. So now what we're gonna do is create some text to apply this effect to. This is gonna work with any vector object that you create with an illustrator. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're just going to type some text. So we'll type out maybe the word retro, blow that up a little bit. Okay, we got that pulled up. And then we'll switch it to maybe like a chi. I like the chi font a lot. Cool, cool retro font. And blow that up so it fills more of our artboard. Okay, and then we'll just center it really quick within the artboard so it looks nice. Then what we'll do is just create a quick little background. So we have kind of a cohesive design. Maybe we'll go with like... Uh, how about an orangish background? I'll move that to the back. And for the text, we'll go, why don't we go like a light blue? Actually, I think I'm gonna go with a red text. So if you're adding this effect to text, what I would recommend is that you turn the text into outlines. And to do that quickly, you can hit Command Shift O, which is going to turn your text rather than from text, it's gonna turn it into a bunch of paths. So now that we have that done, let's just lock the background really quick so we don't do anything with that. So now to apply this texture, what we'll need to do is pull up our transparency window. So if you don't have it already open, you can come up to window and then down to transparency, which will open up your transparency window. The first thing you're gonna do is click the text or whatever you'd like to apply the effect to. And then we'll double click over here on this crossed out section uh, to add the mask. So you'll see that the text disappears right away, but don't worry about that. All you gotta do is click clip, which will bring our text back. Now we'll actually add the texture to the text. So what we'll do is select this texture, hit Command C, and then again, select this text, click over here, and, and we'll paste this texture into the transparency. And then you can pretty much take this and size it however you'd like. Since this is a vector, you can stretch it to be really whatever size you'd like. And from here, you can play with the opacity to kind of decide how much of the background you want to come through the mask. And you're just gonna need to basically play with this until you get a look that you like. So say you want these cracked paint lines to be a lot smaller and more fine, uh, but you don't have uh, enough of a mask to cover up the whole image. Well, that's not a problem. All you have to do is select the mask and click Alt on your keyboard and click and drag, which will copy that same piece of uh, texture over onto the rest of your document. So now you can see that we've added it over here and all we have to do to add the rest to the rest of the image is again, I'll click and drag, which will fill the rest of our image with that. And you can see that we've applied a cracked paint effect to the full document at this point. I'm a huge fan of this texture effect. Again, I love adding textures to my design work because it really starts to give it that real world feel that a lot of times you kind of lose when you're making digital art. So this is a great way to reintroduce that to a, a more digital medium. I hope this video helped some of you guys out. If it did, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like below or even a comment. It really helps the channel out and uh, it would be very much appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.